Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. It is quite late here. I did just get the turn back from Plumber and earlier from Alex. So, you know what, I, I saw that somebody had said uh, slow down on the rate of fees, but you know what? I tell as a challenge. But yeah, seriously, after this turn, I will be heading to bed, so. <laughs> I'm just eager to see what happens here. I'm sure you guys are as well. Uh, we'll get started with this in a moment. I don't have that much time to just faff around here, so we'll go ahead and get into it. Um, I did have a senile moment when I forgot to actually put the saves in. But we'll go ahead and get started in a moment then. Ideally, everything's good to go. Uh, Alex reports here... Sorry, uh, Plumber reports that he didn't like the turn. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> we'll see. That's been a great game so far. Then you could see how things turn out. I do believe that I have things set up here, and um, we should be good to go. Should be good to go. I do hope I haven't buggered up the turns, uh, but I did. Ouch! I did add the saves again just to make sure everything was properly done. So, in terms of what we're doing here, we're going to kind of hold off at Lublin because we don't really have a choice there. I'm waiting for this call to start to death and then I can... I mean, there's apparently only five power there. If these men were active... Now, technically, I could have them attack, but in fairness, there is an army here, so I'm quite... I'm okay to see what happens. But at level two entrenchment in a forest, so it's not a bad thing to have there. If he does move down here to relieve them, there's not really meant to relieve at this point in time. I'm hoping that we will be able to take a Lublin by means of siege, but we'll see. We do have Comrade von Hudson, Hammer of the Russians, moving down here. We do have a call trying to make it over here, and ideally they will arrive here. I've set them to evade combat, which means they will not march the sound of the guns. So I'm hoping that this mobile call will move through Tarnopol. Meanwhile, Comrade von Hotzendorf will move into here and carry out an assault. Which would be quite good. I'd like to take Tarnopol, have control of the rail line, ideally gain control enough here, or an, uh, have enough control to actually utilize the rail line. Or if not, they can move on then afterwards. We'll see. Uh, we do have an army moving down here to Colomia, Col uh, Col which would be this army of some 98,000 men. The idea here is that we can try and create the conditions to ideally. Uh, the most ideal situation would be to have them trapped, or if not trapped, engaged. And really what I'm trying to do here then is engage and destroy this Russian army, if I can. I do have additional heavy artillery on its way. That will be merged into the third army to begin with and then we'll move it forward. Uh, we do have Hindenburg over here who's essentially just waiting for his army to recover. I don't know. I mean, there is a Russian army here. These Russian armies are weak, and but so am I. I just need to recover cohesion, and then and then we can attack. Uh, these men do need to recover, but their cohesion does need to recover. I do have a supply corridor open here now. I'm hoping that will bring things forward. We did achieve a victory over here at Warsaw, but our men uh, again lower on cohesion. So giving them time to just rest there. I'm moving the balloons and the aircraft over here, so I can have them. And maybe I even move them over here. I think I'll move them over here, but a little bit safer then. It takes an extra day, but at least a little bit safer. I do have a cavalry moving over here to secure this rail line. I could even maybe move them here. Uh, I do have this rail line, but I want this rail line so I can connect it up. While Colo and Lodz are next to each other, they're not on the same rail line. I'm moving a call to try and intercept the Russian cavalry here. I'm also moving a core over here in case the Russian cavalry do move to Einstein. We'll see about that. Uh, we do have Alexander von Kluck marching south on Brasatorsk. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to achieve victory there. It's going to take us 30 days to arrive there, so two turns will be in Brasatorsk. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to destroy it. The good news is that I will be able to use the fort bombardment decision once they do arrive. Which is going to really cause a lot of problems there. Uh, it immediately, yeah, uh, so we need 50% uh, village control. And at least two heavy, super heavy artillery elements. 
consumes munitions, but it does see the guns that the actual enemy fortress guns suffer 95% minus 95% cohesion and minus 75% strength immediately, which is good. It means that essentially these guns over here, the fortress guns, will be basically uh, removed as a factor. And then obviously we do have super heavy artillery in this army. We do have heavy artillery and a decent amount of uh, medium artillery. Yeah, we've got like, what, three regiments of heavy artillery, two uh, regiments of super heavy artillery, and then some additional regiments of artillery over here. And good commanders with a good leader, a relatively good leader, but a pretty good leader, actually, a 4-5-1, in fact. Yeah, offensive five leader. He should be able to take it. I imagine people are not aware that the stream's ongoing right now. That's okay. <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens. It'll be a nice surprise for people when they do figure out what's going on here. And imagine the American crowd will be quite happy about this, but we'll see. So the French still have some force over here, but I'm going to allow them to just withdraw. I'm trying to build up my forces once again. And... That's going to take a little bit of time to do so. We do have more men in the area. We have been able to recover strength somewhat, thankfully. And we're now at level 4... Well, at level 3, but we'll be moving into level 4 entrenchment. Uh, across the front here, actually. So what I'm hoping for, then, is we do get a reprieve here on this... A stay of execution, if you will. Because, frankly, we can't afford the losses that we had here. If I take a look again, you can see that we're up to 536,000 losses. 476,000 losses for the rations, and 284,000 losses for the Entente there. A bloody day of battle was had some days ago, and that was a total of four days of battle. So crazy time there. But, yeah... So it's going to be an exciting turn here. Uh, at least I hope so. We'll see. We did manage to see off the Russians over here. So a quick summary of the battles that we had is in order here. Let's see. Yeah, uh, we scored a second bridge at Lublin and again it hits. I'm hoping that we'll be able to destroy them. So we won the battle here against the Grenadier Corps that has attempted to break out. Apparently that was worth two national round. Press F to doubt. We then had a battle of Conrad von Hotzendorf leading against Nikolai Rosicki, or however you want to pronounce that. Another battle against a, yeah, von Molke leading here, or at least in command, versus a core over here, which we defeated. Another battle here with von Hotzendorf against Yakov. Now, I can understand why Plummer was like, I don't like this tile. Yeah, how you doing there, Brankar? I just got the turn. Uh, it is pretty late UK time. It's just gone... Um, it's almost 10 past uh, 12 in the morning. So I'm going to be heading straight to Ben after this. But I thought I'd go ahead and give it a go. The turns don't actually take that long to resolve. And it's a lot of fun. At the end of the day, if people are up and they want to watch, they can watch. And then again, we had the Battle of Warsaw. Uh, I keep clicking off it. The Battle of Warsaw there, 39,000 losses. Again, it is a factor of... It is a factor of exhaustion here. But we did manage to break the Russians. I mean, it was a big loss for the Russians here. A big loss is for us, but again, I just need the position. We'd managed to drive them out of Warsaw too, which is very good. And they're now in a position where they may starve in the future. So we'll see about that. And I'll try and bring that about. And if I can go ahead and take a look at war production again. Uh, we do have five... Sorry, uh, six regiments of Austrian medium artillery and five regiments of German medium artillery that will be active next turn. Uh, we do have a heavy regiment of artillery that will be active next turn as well. And then uh, two turns after that, we'll have another regiment. And then another turn after that, we'll have another two heavy regiments of artillery. I'm really trying to focus upon building artillery. I see that we've been in early November now. The front is going to begin to freeze over. Weather conditions will begin to worsen. I mean, weather conditions over here on this front are clear right now. Yeah, uh, we do see clear weather here. But it will begin to change. In the north, we see that we have harsh weather. We have a deep cold moving in here. Hey, in there, Brooks. 
Yeah, this afternoon. <laughs> uh, we've only just got started here. I'm going to go ahead and resolve the turn, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and head off to bed. But yeah, we have this deep cold moving in from the north here that will make its way over here. It could even be here by next turn. I guess uh, I guess we'll hope for the best. I don't know, maybe if I can get the two turns and make it to Brasotorsk, everything else is okay. We just need Brasotorsk. As soon as I'm there, then these men are trapped, and that would be free armies, basically to be wrapped up, and that would be quite a big loss to the Russians. That would be a big loss here in 1914. We'll see. I do need a posi I, well, I do need a period of rest as well for these forces, but we'll see. Uh, we do have Mr. Von Leto of Scandinavia in the future, anyhow. Uh, we do have the fleet over here returning to Europe and then moving forward. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Oh, I love that. Love it, man. All right, we'll go ahead and go with that then. So, how do I foresee this turn going? I'm hoping well. This army over here of Von Blue is so lucky in the fact that they are not having to deal with the shit that a lot of the other German forces are having to deal with. But we'll see. They do have level 2 entrenchment, which is good, as do these men here too. Uh, I need to get better at managing my munitions here, but it's a little risky with the Russian cavalry around here. But in fairness, they are empty, so I can go ahead and have it sent over here to the fortress. Whether or not they can take on uh, the munitions there or not, I'm not too sure. But I'm going to have them move through. And I do need to have um, stock back up again. I'm also going to make sure that these munitions are spread out more widely than in the future too. But we'll get to a point of where we can do a lot of things. Right now we're kind of dealing with things as they are. Rather than as we would prefer. Uh, we will be raising six new Austrian generals next turn. So that's going to be quite good. Uh, I'm also looking towards reducing the rebel alignment in Austria too. Alex has been doing that for the French. The Russians are okay, but the Russians are looking down the barrel of morale. If they get to 87, sorry, if they get to 75, then problems really start to occur for them. And then we can begin to build up the Russian rebel problem. So we'll go ahead here and save. I do believe I have the right turns in here. And I haven't had a senile moment, but we'll see. So I do have a Korv uh, Edba, what a great name, although I don't know how you pronounce it. I, I tell them to head back. Oh, we scored another breach there at Lublin, so that's good, so we inflict more hits there at Lublin. Ooh, we see the force of the Vanguard. They may be escaping. Right, it looks like, looks like they are moving to Brasotorsk, okay. Ah, uh, we catch the cavalry. That's good. Right, so we do catch that pesky Russian cavalry. It looks like he is moving to Brestatorsk. I may yet be able to fight him at Brestatorsk then. Ah, we'll see about that. Hmm. Yeah, he's arrived there. Maybe we can engage yet. We'll see. Right, moving. Looks like the Russian army there retreated, which makes sense. They did get hit hard. Uh, we do see some forces out there in the Indian Ocean. Yeah, uh, his Grenadier Corps escaped. Interesting. Seeing Russians out here. Oh, so he's moved to Hindenburg's position, it seems. Oh, we've seen French uh, submarines out of a Heligoland. Interesting. He might be moving towards the Baltic. Alright, I'm happy so far with the Western Front. Relatively quiet here so far. There we have Hotendorf. Yeah, those men are gone. Yeah, those men are gone there. Ooh, interestingly enough there, actually. So we lose uh, 10,000 men, but we actually do get an opportunity. It looks like the army of Nikolai there was able to reinforce the core that was in uh, the town there, in the city there. 
and we managed to inflict some pretty hefty losses there. Interestingly enough, there's some supply and munitions here, so I may have actually captured those. That's great then. Uh, fairly low losses. We inflict more losses upon the army of Nikolai over here. And maybe I gain Tarnopol. Right. So the Russians are trying to move, it seems. Interesting. I lost a lot of cohesion margin here. Am I going to be able to make it to Brasatorsk? It may be too late now. I don't know why I've lost so much cohesion here. I guess we'll see one of these state of players. I may have... I don't know. I may have to move them back. We'll see about that. Ah, there you go. Yeah, that explains it. The bad weather has arrived. Hmm... Yeah. Okay. Wow, well, that supply arrived. Okay. Yeah, the harsh weather has arrived here. He did withdraw his forces to Vangorod. Uh, sorry, to Brasatorsk. <sighs> Had it been a little longer, is this army still not active? Oh, thank God, there's finally somebody active over here. Interesting. Uh, Lublin will fall, so we'll go ahead and order that uh, assault there. The Russians actually managed to escape us over here, then. They managed to move over here. Interesting. I could go ahead and follow them, which I'm going to go ahead and do here. Okay. So not the ideal turn, then. Not what I would have wanted. Wow, can you even see the poor weapon over here? That's going to throw damper on things. We have a lot of cohesion loss here. That's not ideal. We do have a supply. We also do have the munitions, thankfully. Uh, the Russians are still in position here. Okay. Right. Hmm. Hey, didn't know Haramir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This will be the last one for today. Most of today is already over. But yeah, interesting results here today, then. So the weather has really come in. The snow has arrived. It has brought down the cohesion of our German forces here. And I think uh, his army did leave Avangarod, which is a shame. Had we been able to cut the rails, then I could have prevented this. But again, I guess this is just the way it panned out here. I think what I'll do then is pull back to Grodno. 16 days by rail. Yeah, we'll pull back. I still have Russian forces trapped over here, which is good. Do I not have the rail? Oh, it's because they ha I was going to say, like, why is that taking so long? Do I not? Oh, I don't have enough control here to use a rail line, it seems. Okay. Yeah, the, the winter there did come in. Did save them. But it's not going to save these forces. Luckily, I do have better weather over here. Right, I'm finally in a position here. Can't see what's going on here. Do we have a breach? Do we have... Uh, I can't actually bloody well see it sometimes. But it looks like we have Poland now. Really under control. He's chosen to make a run for it. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. I could still actually move these forces around here. Uh, he has his Russian forces over here. But yes, what we'll do then is we'll have the army pulled back, sadly. We'll have them hunker down then for the winter. But the Russians are just about saved here by winter, even over here in the north of the Austrian Empire. That's its unfortunate problem. If we had another turn or two of good weather, I think we'd have got that. 
Oh, our forces do surrender over here then. So he actually doesn't have to even attack. They just surrender. That's a shame. They didn't have supplies. I think they ran out of supply and gave it up. But that's okay. Yeah, they gain four victory points. We lose national morale from that, sadly. Hmm. The good news is, though, we'll make up for it. It's a shame about the bad weather over here. But what we'll do then is we'll use this point then of poor weather in the, in the east, I should say. And we'll hunker down. Prepare for the campaign season in 1915. We do have some Russian forces in pretty interesting positions here. Uh, we'll have Hindenburg take this. I believe I should be able to manage it. Once we have the fortress under our control, then that's good. These men just need to recover cohesion. Possibly take on replacements too. So let's see here. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. I think we'll be in a good strong position anyhow. Uh, we'll see what goes on with these Russians over here. I'm about 16 days out from this position here, but the, uh, the good thing is... Let's see. 15 days that way. I've got plenty of supply here, but again, I need to have this spread out more, really. Uh, I see why. There's not actually a rail connection there. Oh no, there is a rail connection. There is a rail connection. Why is it taking so damn long? Hmm. That's not... I guess that's still better than what it would have been. Have a merge in together. Oh, in fact, um... Move that. Yeah. I think it's not bad at all, actually. It's a shame, though, because we were just in a position to begin a pretty nice offensive against the Russians here. 17%. <sighs> I will have the call return. I can't do it without... Yeah, I can't do it without the army of Hotzendorf. So we'll have them head back. Definitely brought the offensive operations to an end here. Okay. And there is good news though, we still have Russian forces, a pretty strong call over here actually. Which is quite nice. Yeah, and then I'll take this fortress as well. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, he will be rebuilding his forces, but I think once we recover our forces, then I will probably have to relent and um, rebuild the numbers, or at least increase the numbers. Right, I'm feeling a lot more... Uh, I'm feeling more confident out here. I think I may have the Northern Army just retire to Sarborg on the hang. I think probably retire to Mohang, perhaps. I think we can probably afford to do that. Hmm. He'll be able to take on replacements. And I think with that, that is going to bring the Western Front to a... 
to a close now. We have level of four entrenchments here. We managed to hold at great, great cost, but we managed to hold. What I may try to do as well is see if I can change out the uh, CNC in... Well, in the theaters. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, sadly no great victory this time. The weather really has saved the Russians here. Hmm. Oh, we do increase support in Bulgaria. Oh, and again in Holland. That's really good, actually. Right, Romania there. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the Western Entente has accepted Portugal into the alliance. So, uh, the Portuguese have entered into the war. Right, let's see. So, unsuccessful in Romania. We succeed here in Bulgaria. In the Netherlands. And I guess not in Greece. Right, some more replacements have headed out here. I wish I could tell exactly where they'd gone, but... I guess we can try and figure that out. Ooh. The enemy bombed our position with eight air squadrons and managed to score one hit and six, uh, one hit and six cohesion hits. And that was on this front. I need to look in the bombing missions. Does he have bombers? Is he using fighters or, or reconnaissance? Interesting. I need to double check the air modes then because that's the first time I've seen that with eight air squadrons. It might be that you have to have a certain number. I know that fighters can do uh, damage, but that's interesting. Alright. Still need to deal with that Russian cavalry, though. Hmm. Let me go ahead and get the men shifted up over there. Yeah, uh, still have some munitions and supplies over here. The munitions and supplies finally arrived for the Warsaw forces, so that's good. I think what we'll do... I do that, George George. You miss winter saving the Russians' asses. We were marching on Brest at I did have my cohesion drop due to the weather here and we did see a Russian army evacuated from Evangorod to Brasotosk but that's interesting the fact that he is holding here he's not ceding the entirety of Poland but he's retreating to his alliance now it's a shame though because I did want to have Hotzendorf come around here and smack them but that cohesion drop is pretty massive we did finally get well we did uh, get to inflict a last victory a last defeat on the Russians there. And there's still forces over here at Tarnopol. So I can take the city back. Right. Ah, okay, now we're seeing it. Interesting. Yeah, we intercepted an enemy airplane formation attempting to perform an air reconnaissance mission in Mex in Met, sorry. Uh we lost the airplanes and shot down two. Interesting. Maybe I've not been seeing this here, but I'm sure I've been checking this and haven't seen this before. So we're now starting to see that. Shot down two fight. Sorry, two aircraft. Shot down two. Shot down five over here. All right. We do regain the Bralatanopol. That's good. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Let 
Yeah, we do have his well covered. Uh, we'll actually have a proper fighter battalion ready then next turn, which is good. I think that will be the first one. I'm looking for... Oh, there we go. We also do have another regiment of heavy artillery now available. Have it sent out here. Lovely. And I should have my medium artillery available now. Uh, that will be two turns from now. Three regiments over here. So we'll have a regiment of heavy artillery and five regiments of medium artillery moving out to the front. Turn after we'll have a fighter battalion moving. Not often you get to see a, a CA fighter battalion. Now on three turns. Now, I did see these uh, French submarines over here, which is interesting. I'm going to go ahead and have these guys move out. Maybe I can move them to the Atlantic. We'll give it a go anyway. Give it a go. Though saying that, that is harsh weather, so is it worth it? Mm, maybe not. I guess we'll see. I really, when I did have a thousand war supplies, really considering like starting like a mass submarine program, but there's a lot of competing, competing goals here, right? So the British are at sixteen percent this turn. The Ottomans at seventy-three. The Italians haven't moved much. We did manage to move them in our favor, but I will have to try and move there again. We had the Dutch move a percentage point towards us, so it's going to take a long time to get them moving. The Bulgarians do shift as well, 2% this turn. Once I can get to the 70% here, then we can get them moving. Yeah, Romania's moving in the right direction now. Very good. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, new generals available in Vienna. Oh, wow. Wow. Royalty. So. Expert forager. Reduces, okay, this element of our commander reduces by 50% the chances that our unit pillages the region when foraging. That's good, so we can gain more supply out there. He's from the School of Defense. Very useful to have. And he's an able strategist. He's a pretty damn good guy to have. 43, not bad, not bad. Staffer, good guy to have. We have here a uh, Mr. Carl. Research uh, will be unlocked more, so I'll show it in a few minutes. But what goes on is essentially ticks on by, and then it, once it gets to a certain point, you can start to get decisions to boost research, but it, it, it goes on in the background for the most part. You can influence it by spending resources later. Ah, uh, Fjord Battalion. Uh, this general concentrates his regiment to improvised defenders. Plus 20% defensive firepower, plus one protection for all elements in a unit the general is attached to. Even R2 uh, if active. Uh, plus three bonus to the check need to form a square against cavalry charges. Interesting. Disabled. Interesting. Well, that's pretty good. That defensive firepower is quite nice. And he's a good army administrator. He's going to be a very good commander, in fact. Uh, what's his stats? A 2-2-1. Two, two, we have Alfred Kras. He's a fast mover and an infiltration tactician. Good. Uh, discipline there of troops is very useful. Okay. Steiner. Wow. Rudolf Stuger Steiner von Steinstatten. What a fucking German name. He's stressed, however. Probably because his name is so long. There is an open order tactician. Like, look at it. It even overhangs. We have Victor Weber von Webernau. Webernau. 
uh, his full commander, uh, but is an Alpine Jaeger tactician, which is useful. He's actually got good stats, so I don't know if I've been poor commander. He's actually better than a lot of other commanders. Oh, we do have some of the beating my artillery here. Right, there we are. Excellent. That's good then. So we finally have some commanders here to work with. So we'll prepare then for the campaign in season, essentially. Uh, two turns on these guys. Yeah, two turns on those. Uh, you can see that the weather's turning over here as well. How am I doing down here? Okay, so our movement did go ahead. Uh, there is a worry about what might happen. Uh, it's moving in over here. It's just a level 2 city, does it? Doesn't actually matter. He may be, in fact, seeking to move here. I think I'm going to go ahead and use my rail. I mean, I could move to retake Sarajevo. And in fact, I think that is the right decision. If I move to retake Sarajevo, he's... Uh, he's not really going to move in here with supplies anyway. He's going to starve to death out here. I could be there in six days. Once we do have the opportunity, I'll move down here to Kataro, uh, and we'll have the fleet come out to uh, bombard. So there'll be 126 ships in here of the Imperial fleet, and they can bombard the Montenegro army there. Yeah. Yeah, that cold front's really setting in here. Level 2 entrenchment. Hmm. So I'll go ahead and show that research. So each time we've been playing now, this has been taken up slowly. I think it gets to a certain point and then you can start to use decisions to actually boost research. But it's like, for example, once we get to the level 2 chemical warfare, that's when shit gets real. Artillery, we gain trench water, so it unlocks an improved field artillery model with trench penetration. So essentially what happens is when you lose artillery, uh, well, sorry, we have light artillery right now. What will happen is once that's lost, it'll be upgraded and everything built is upgraded to the new model. Um, there's a French Navy. The British Navy hasn't yet entered the war, but we'll be doing soon enough. They have the infantry research here as well, so we'll move to helmets and uniforms, then grenades and flamethrowers. And Strosh Trupan, so basically assault troops there. Aviation, so interrupted gear there. Unlocks a new air fighter model. Close air support and flying circus. And then tanks will be fun. Tanks hasn't been, uh, well, tanks are not underway right now, but in the future they will be. Our uh, U boat research is going well, 60% there. I think that's the highest. Yeah, that's the highest here. That's excellent then. So soon we'll be able to have, in well, we'll have access to long range submarines then. That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely would be quite cool. British are not far away. So the British are going to be here in November. Uh, sorry, in uh, 1915, I should say. Right, we'll reorganise here as well then in the coming days. Is he still really not active? My god. I've got six engagement points over here. I may go ahead and raise some new German generals too. I am in a position where I have more men than I have generals. It's a good thing that we had the infusion of militia when they arrived. Our armies were bled white, as was his. But Vosges has turned over to the French, and things are probably going to settle down now. At least we can hope. So let's see. Hmm. Yes, yeah, it's a shame that their fighting capacity crumbled. I would have wanted to have had Tarnopol this turn, but it is what it is. So we'll go ahead and see where our forces are over here. Right, they're going to be transitioning now to Western Europe. Be arriving out of the blockade box here soon enough. So... 
We have about 17 days until they arrive over here at Danzig. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be really quite amusing. I do feel bad for these colonial troops arriving in Europe during winter. That's so shitty. That's so awful. Hmm. So what went well for us this turn then? Well, we'll have Lublin next turn. I can say that for sure. We'll have Evangorod sometime after. Uh, we'll have to deal with a Russian incursion over here, but I think we can manage that. So shame that it took it, but obviously this was the case. Arguably, I didn't have to move from here. But I did manage to build the army of Hotzendorf. But they do need to recover. So they'll return when we can. We've been out to inflict losses on this army a few times now. Under Nikolai. Which has been good. He pulled back. I, I thought he might have retreated but he hasn't completely. He's very fortunate about the winter. Very fortunate. Okay. So we have 293 war supply here. Right. Hmm. We remove fo more fortress guns over here at Polar. There we are. And that is another brigade of heavy artillery. A lot of cannon there. They too will move to Lemberg. And in fairness, what I'll do then is... Uh, I'll probably set up some siege cores, really. I could find like a good artillery commander and have them move around and sit on top of these fortresses and we'll just besiege them over winter, really. Uh, for example, the fortress, the citadel over here. It'll have some supply, but once that's expended, it'll go. Uh, Avangorod as well. What is that to spend it then that will go? Warsaw, I'm hoping to have this turn. Well, soon enough anyway. I could order an assault on the city. <sighs> but what I'll do then is I'll wait until... I'll, I'll probably bring up the super heavy guns perhaps, but then again it's only a size 1 fortress. We'll see. We'll deal with this situation over here. So we see a regular unit. Fedor Marston. I may be able to inflict like a final defeat upon these guys. What I need to do then, importantly, is destroy the rail line here, if I can. Uh, it's a shame about the Russians here. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like they bled out there. Just lack of supply there. So 13 days will arrive. It really is difficult to send men out without supplies. I'll definitely bear that in mind in the future again. Uh, we do have supply here, but we'll take Lublin in the following turn. Once we have Lublin, we have our entire control. I need to take control of this rail line. How many men are here? 302. That's a good sized core there. Hmm. Yeah, so we'll properly reorganize our armies. Hindenburg. Ah. 643. I think he had a reduction in stats there. I'm pretty sure he did. His strategic has increased, but it looks like his, uh, I think his offensive went down. And I think that's reflected by the defeats that, uh, were suffered, but we can, we can recover that. Now, I can't bloody see what's going on here. 
I think there's a button to hide the unit. I cannot remember what it is. Um, I remember there being one way. Right, that's better. So it's a size 2 city with size 1 fort. It is a, yeah, again a size 1 fort. 42 men here. Oh, 42 power. I think what I'll do is go ahead and assault the city this turn. Yeah, this region's been pillaged. I don't know, maybe maybe it's not worth assaulting it. I mean, really, I'd want to be in a position when I could follow this 9th army to the north there. Hmm. Um, this rail line's not cut. He wants to prevent me from moving men here. So we had 549,000 losses here for the first year of the war. A lot of men lost there. The Eastern Entente is down to 85. They would have been down to 84 had they not taken the objective. We see here 86 for the West. 500,000 losses. 284,000 losses here. So in terms of losses, we are doing okay. Uh, lost a lot more than I would have preferred, however. I think what we'll go ahead and do is restructure our forces. And we'll see what we can do. There's a part of me that I was thinking there about retreating from Valdemarzel. We have a lot more men on this front than we used to. Right, you can see here that this stack uh, that wars at once, at one point down to 27,000 men for all eight divisions is now up to just shy of 100,000 men. So replacements are moving out there. 179,000 men here, good god. And that's the militia there. Need to have that replaced with the actual proper divisions, because I'm obviously lacking light artillery here. Yeah. I should have really had that heavy artillery move to the south. Like, we have two regiments of heavy artillery that have not been in any use, really. Hmm. Gosh, that time has gone by so quickly. I can't believe it's almost 1am here. Good God. Okay. I'll finish up here uh, real quick. Yeah, so how are we doing over here then? How are we doing in terms of supply? Yeah, we do have supply over here then at Countess. That's good news. Not seeing supply here yet. Yeah, I didn't get enough uh, military control over here, which is a big shame. Hmm. I am in a difficult position here, actually. <laughs> oh. 
I'm kind of thinking about uh, potentially having the third army. Maybe move to relieve some pressure here on the east. Ah, oh, it's in Prussia. Ah, so it took my bell. I think we'll order an assault then. And then what we'll do then is we'll finish off the fortresses around the, uh, the area. I'll, um... I'll have the super heavy artillery drawn upon in that regard then. It does mean that I can just subdue fortress defences and inflict breaches upon them. I, I am thinking perhaps it is time to build more men perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Or is it? I don't know. There's a part of me that's... Um, Pretty adamant that I should probably just continue with producing artillery, allowing my men just to recover. But I do have a little bit of fragility in the system here. Because I could do with some additional armies being raised. At least I do have artillery moving over here to the north now, that's good. The Servians are causing problems with nothing that cannot be sustained. We'll have vastly more artillery as well now, which is good. Like, we've definitely, definitely increased the amount of heavy artillery. And then obviously having, like, the medium artillery moving out here. It's five regiments, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's still... I mean, each regiment is... Uh, just about six guns, but it does make a difference. It does make a difference. Like, if I go ahead and take a look over here, then... Right, where's the victory... Yeah, if we take a look over here then. This battle... Yeah, this battle began at range 7. See their friendly range... Yeah, friendly side, initial range 7, elements at start, 4 to 6. Uh, so that's the thing there, initial range for the enemy is 6. Which means that I think he has heavy artillery there, or did have heavy artillery. Uh, but yeah, that's the thing to bear in mind here, is that we outranged the enemy at the beginning of the battle, which means we got to have like a free shot at them with heavy artillery. So you can imagine, once I do build up the amount of heavy artillery I have, also do note, I lost 6 guns, he lost 85. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, we do have Alpine Jaeger here to march faster with, which is good. I don't know. I've got 293 war supply there. Let's see, do I have any unlocked options? Not yet. Just these ones. Uh, it's interesting to think about maybe... Maybe paying... The Ottoman Empire. It only moved me to 83%, so I'm not gaining all that much. 
they'll join they'll join in like 1915 uh, well, oh actually interestingly enough uh, uh, in theory Romania and the Ottomans were joined at the same time or roughly around the same time which would be really quite a swing in there the Bulgarians are going to take a little bit longer but looking at how things are going to go then hmm Yeah, if I recognize Bulgarian war goals, then they'll move sooner. I don't have the option to recognize them right now, but I don't think it's worthwhile. Uh, if we do gain the Greeks and the Romanians, and obviously with the Bulgarians, then that is a substantial amount of force over here. I don't know how large their armies are, but we'd have a lot to work with. Uh, I could even then make use of like bases down here in Greece to support the Ottomans. I don't know what what we gain. I've never had the Greeks on my side. I've never had the Romanians either. So having access to the Hellenic army and navy, to the Romanian, to the Roman army and navy as well, if they even indeed have a navy, uh, would be rather interesting. It presents us with a source of manpower, importantly. A good harbour there at Athens. Hmm. Yeah, good assets to have there. We know about the wheat over here, uh, the black and wheat. Yeah, and it, it may come that Serbia's time will be. Yeah, we'll, we'll end when these nations join in 1915. We'll definitely get all of them in 1915, I believe. I, I don't think there's anything you can really do about Romania. I don't think it's all that much you can do. So, interesting stuff. I do need to take more Russian force, I'm hoping. We did gain something like 600 war supply from taking Russian forts. I'm hoping with the Russian forts that we can take now, uh, with that war supply gained, I can then go ahead and use that and build other forces. Ah, both! Well, the Entente players. Yeah, like printing state funds over here. Both of them have printed state funds. We haven't as of yet. Like, our inflation here is still zero. I have not really raised that many troops. Hmm. Ah, that's interesting. I mean, well, we have effectively abandoned the colonies completely. I do have the naval forces moving in over here. But, um, yeah, uh, that'll be another... It's not really giving me the counter ships here, just the men. Yeah, we have a good few men. Uh, well, I mean, we gained 30,000 men moving to Europe. Obviously, I'll have to see what happens, like whether they get replacements for infantry. I guess they'll get light, re light infantry replacements or irregulars, I don't know, something like that. Uh, but we do have, I think it was like 25 ships or something like that. We do have battle cruiser there, the armored cruiser, and then the light cruisers. And at the end of the day, that does help. Oh, also importantly, is the Asian transport over here. These are commerce steamers, which are good. What I can go ahead and do with them is have them included in the Baltic shipping box. Uh, there's not that many of them, only two of them. But again, it, sorry, only uh, 12 of them. These are 24. But it does mean that I'll be able to have more war supply moving through here, which is quite good. I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and have some lighter assets to yeah, dispatch the Baltic shipping box there. I will see. It's nice to see the French Navy out, even if it's just the submarines. Okay. Right, we'll go ahead and just do some last minute things here. So in terms of unlocking fortress guns,
I could look at like Krakow and places like that. Fortress guns over here at uh, Frankfurt. Hmm. Naval invasions, oh come, I just need to have the men. I've got the lift capacity for it. If I go ahead and take a look over here at Danzig, sorry. Like at Danzig, we have the this quadrant here, transports, which I'm actually going to go ahead and increase. So you can see that we have 75 transports over here. Uh, two ocean liners and then plenty of actual transports with a auxiliary cruiser, which I'm not entirely sure what the auxiliary cruiser is for. I think it's just long because it, it's technically a transport ship, but I guess it's just an old ship. And uh, we'll have more transports moving in. And, uh, actually, no, these are all my transports I have. Uh, so I do have the capacity to lift an army. I just need to build an army. Or a core, or something of that nature. I think having Alpine troops sent out there would be quite smart, but we'll see. <laughs> hmm. Do I lift guns at fortresses around here? Oh, there's some more artillery there. Hmm. See, this is the problem with these fortresses. Fortresses are great if they can be relieved or the besieger can't can't wait them out and these are very strong Austrian fortresses but I'm thinking about having the artillery lifted from them it's an interesting one really regarding how things are going to fly <laughs> yeah I know right <laughs> hmm. So I need to drop the Russian morale by 10. I think they do lose morale for each of the, the strategic objectives lost, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, in which case that means that we have a couple cities that we can take that will drop their morale. I and mean, if we can inflict some greater losses on them, that would be quite good. But I think we're looking good for 1915. I think I just need... I don't know. What are we looking at in terms of replacements? They've not really had a chance to go out yet. I'm going to go ahead and lift guns. I'm going to go ahead and say if the battle reaches like Cologne or something like that, then the war's probably... It, it's probably not going to matter. Let me see. So I can build, I think, 11 more regiments of heavy artillery. The Austrians can have another five, at least that's built. Hmm. 
who I don't know. It's it's one of those really, isn't it? It's like looking towards the lessons of the Franco-Prussian War, and it's like, well, they tried for that knockout blow, and it didn't work. And it's difficult as well when you're dealing with the British and the distant blockade. There's not really much they could have done about that unless they did engage, and even then that could have been... I mean, really, who knows? They could have come out on top. There were a lot of issues with the Grand Fleet. But it's hard to say, really, how things could have gone. But they just weren't set up for a strategic victory, really. Alright. I think what I'll go ahead and do is probably lift artillery from the Germans. Though I may, I may continue with just the Austrians. I could lift the artillery over here, actually. Oh yes, perfect. I'd be tempted to lift the artillery over here, but we'll see. I'll lift the artillery here on the Romanian border. At the end of the day, we'll have Romania more than likely join the Central Power, so this fortress isn't going to be that important. Uh, the artillery will be, however. So... Yes... Very good. What we'll go ahead and do then is we'll consolidate our forces then. We do have to extricate ourselves from the situation. Uh, potentially hold along this axis, but it depends really. I'm not... Um, yeah, see this is a strategic point, isn't it? But it's... It's not really terribly defensible. I think I'd rather hold at Grodno, but we'll see about that. Yeah, we have ammo production ongoing. Uh, I did actually... Con oh, I think it should be finished by now. I did start production very early on, on the first turn, for... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and place you in Berlin. Yeah. Uh... Right, so we have... Oh, it's still under construction, okay. Yes, we have another munitions factory still under construction there. Interesting that we have an artillery factory. Uh, that's about like how many how much you can produce there. Yeah, so we have that artillery munitions factory there still under construction. I may go ahead and start the construction of a second, maybe of a third. Uh, each of these factories do produce about five shells a turn. Yeah, five munitions each turn. Hmm. And I may want to start doing that. But I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is build the regiments and then build the ammo production. The reason for that is I'm not expecting a huge amount of combat for a little bit of time. So if I build up the regiments and have them ready, I've got the ammo for a short period of time. And then I can focus on building up the ammo production. But at least then I've got the guns in place then. The ammo isn't going to keep the enemy away, but the guns are sure as hell will. Alright, munitions over here. Yeah, we did do well in capturing munitions from the French and from the Russians, which is going to be very, very helpful. Uh, as you can see here, these Russian munitions and Russian supplies are very handy. But uh, just bear in mind, to construct munitions is a grand total of 400 war supply, which is a lot. That is a lot of war supply. That's almost two heavy artillery regiments. It's quite a few medium artillery regiments and a lot of light artillery regiments. So bear that in mind. But yeah, we'll go ahead and seal the deal on, them, uh, on Dublin next turn. Had these guys... Been, I don't know. It's one of these things. It's like 1914 could have worked out different. Had these two Austrian armies had commanders that were active. I think maybe in the future what I might go ahead and do is... Hold off on diplomats maybe a turn or two and actually use their engagement points to raise generals because it could have meant I had a commander who was active or more likely to be active but uh, it's interesting nonetheless. So we do have von Hotzendorf over here, it's going to be 
Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, I may have him... Mm, I don't know. I could have him attack again, but we'll see. Hmm. Right, we'll go ahead and call it here. So I'll finish this turn off tomorrow, and maybe we have the opportunity to stream the next part. I do love how quickly this game can move. It's really quite good. So thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to go ahead and get some sleep. Take care and stay amazing. Thank you for the continued support. It means a lot. Hope to see you again in the future. Goodbye for now. Take care and stay safe. And do tell me the price of a mile.